Shalawah Makim. I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, the Bahamas to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalawah to the elect. Today's lesson is going to be a reply of the elder brother uh, Yeshawamba, um, as well as the uh, apostle Gobar. He had did a lesson based off of this video entitled vocab on why he ignores 1948 all right and um my thing is if you're apologetic as apostle paul is okay then you would hate all wickedness you know now he claims because in this this interview or not this interview but this i guess this video vocab i did sarnetta was asking him i believe it was sarnetta you know, um, well, he's basically just answering a, a question that was out there that, you know, why doesn't he get on, you know, these, these, uh, 1948ers, you know, why is he so hell bent on the Hebrew Israelites, you know, and he, he, he replied, you know, I don't know too much about the, the other, I don't know too much about anything else, just these guys, but he applied, there was a point in time when he didn't know much about us, you know, but he applied his heart to learn, so. He goes to show you which we already know. He's just hell-bent on us. All right? So, if, you know, if you're an apologetic, but you're not set for defense of all, of all wickedness, then you must have been sent. You know? That's my thing. You must have been sent. You know, it's obvious. But anyway, um, we're going to get into some precepts. Because he calls himself an apologist. Right? So when we go to that word, which the apologist is based upon the Philippians 1 and 17. All right? But I'll start at Philippians 1 and 15. Some indeed preach Hamashiach. All right, which the world will call Christ as you read it, knowing what we understand through the spirit. All right, that the Christ that the world looks at is um goes back to a, a Greco Roman God by the name of Serapis Christus. All right, nevertheless, that had nothing to do with the son of the Heavenly Father, which his name is Yahweh Shai. He was a so called dark skinned man, all right, who was of the tribe of Judah. All right, he was born of a physical mom and a physical dad, and he, he was born in the flesh. Okay, so it says, Some indeed preach Hamashiach, all right, for argument's sake, let's say Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ unto the one preach Christ of contention. Not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Okay, so this word defense going into the word apologia, okay, which is a verbal defense, a speech in defense, a reason statement or argument. Okay. And then when we go to gospel, all right, for the defense of the gospel, it goes into the word evangelion. Evangelion. It says a reward for good tidings, good tidings. Okay. The glad tidings of the kingdom of God soon to be set up and subsequently also of also of. Yahweh Shai the Messiah. You know, and we over here at Great Millstone, we like saying Yahweh Shai. Okay? But I said, you know, for argument's sake, because that's what the world and this guy vocab will call him. After the death of Christ, the term uh, compromise is also the preaching of concerning. Jesus Christ as having suffered death on the cross to procure eternal salvation for the men in the kingdom of God. 
but as restored to life and exalted to the right hand of God in heaven, thence to return in majesty to consummate the kingdom of God. You know, and all these. So as we read it, we understand or we see that the gospel constitutes the whole book because throughout the whole book, it speaks about. All right. Uh, who the word and we cause Christ coming back and saving Israel from their iniquities. OK, it speaks about glad tidings for, for the children of Israel. So it's safe to say that the whole Bible is considered a good tiding. As you know, the world calls it, which is true, it is the good book. All right, for Israel. The glad tidings of salvation through Hamashiach, through Christ. Okay. So he is set forth a defense of the gospel as we just went into. The word defense, obvious, you know, defending something, uh, you know, a verbal uh, uh, ref refutal of something and a gospel, meaning the good news. So you're defending the whole book, right? We could all agree on that. When we go to Second Corinthians, which Apostle Paul also wrote, you know, he, he was also speaking within this chapter. It says. Second Corinthians 10. I'll, start, I'll jump straight to the point. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Okay, so the Apostle Paul, who made the statement of being set forth as in defense of the gospel, also made it a statement, all right, to tell the Corinthians right here, as before, you know, well, then he told the Philippians, another sect of uh, Israelite foreigners in, in, in uh, the land of Philippi, but now he's in the land of Corinth, saying the same message to another sect of Israelite foreigners, you know, but he's telling them, Listen, he's also, you know, he's basically saying the same thing, but it's, it's, it's more in, in, it's more drawn out. So it says, casting down, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, against the gospel, right? That word every, meaning individually, each, every, any, all the whole. Okay. That exalteth him itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought. To the obedience of Hamashiach. And Apostle Paul, he walked it like he talked it. All right. He actually, you know, spoke about marriage. And he spoke about. Uh, homosexuality, you know, he spoke about idolatry. He spoke about all aspects of all all the wickedness that um the Lord's people were doing at that time. All right, because it is written of in the gospel. The gospel speaks against homosexuality. The gospel speaks against idolatry. Okay, all evil. All right, was was cast down. Through the through Apostle Paul and him preaching of the gospel. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So basically going into when you learn this truth, as the Lord even told Jeremiah, all right, first you learn it and then you go out there and teach others um the way. All right. The way uh back to Yahweh Shah. Okay, when your obedience is fulfilled, so it's obvious that his obedience isn't fulfilled, which again, you know, we do these videos for the elect's sake because we already know what time it is, you know, but hey, his actions, according to the scriptures, the scriptures, Apostle Paul's actions, how he calls himself apologia, you know, or really just the apostles in general, it doesn't match up. Okay. So now let's go to the book of 
James chapter 3, verse 14. Actually, it started at 13, you know, which James, I would, you know, I would think James would know he he was talking, he's talking about too, him being an apostle, actually walking with Yahweh okay, just as a apostle of Paul actually, you know, spoke, uh, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Yahweh So it says, or as I mentioned before, Yahweh will be who the world and we call Jesus Christ. So it says, who is a wise man and endure it with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Okay. Meaning not to be proud. We're not proud with this knowledge. You know, it wasn't, it was, it's not of us. Okay. But I, hey, going into the point I brought out before, how your works Reprove what manner of man you are. Are you a man of the Lord or not? But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Okay? Because that's 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 how you have it to where a person will hate you so much that they'll lie against the truth just to see you harmed. Just as he did Yahweh Shai, they would also do his men. The scriptures even say that. You know, the servant is not greater than his master. They have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. That's why Yahweh Shah told his disciples from the very beginning, blessed are you that are persecuted for righteousness sakes. And that's what it is. We're actually telling the truth and the world hates that. Okay? It's easier to, you know, as the brother Kalab goes into, it's easier to um, play around with gray areas. But according to the truth, the truth is a, is a straight gate. All right, it's the position of difficulty. All right, and it's straight. You know, it's it's, it's um, it's no frills. All right, it's harsh. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't tickle your fancy. It doesn't tickle your ears. But nevertheless, it's 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 there for your betterment. Okay. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? Resembling or proceeding from an evil spirit, demon like. Okay? So if you have a single mind against one person, and you know what I'm saying, you're so hot against this person that it's not really of truth, it's of. You know, it's of your own heart, then you're you're a devil. For what envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. All right. Easily obeying, compliant. And things that we say is is it's not hard to see. All right. As I was, as I mentioned before, I was watching the Apostle Bar's lesson. And he was going into um, Isaiah two. Isaiah two is a clear cut against those nineteen forty eighters, because for one, you know they say that they don't know where the other tribes are, but according to Isaiah two, all right, you will have Judah and Israel, which is the other tribes. Okay, because all twelve tribes will be back in the land. All right, and furthermore. The world is not at peace. They're actually talking about going to World War III at this very day. Okay? But according to what we speak of, we say that according to the end of days, the, the world will be in an uproar. As Yahweh Shai said, there will be famines and great earthquakes. These things are happening. And these things will be happening prior to Yahweh Shai's return. Alright? So their, doctors, their doctrine basically pushes that Yahweh Shai has already returned. 
And that doctrine is showing you that he hasn't. And when you look at the world, all right, you can see who has, you know, who has the wisdom from above. Okay. So it says, and treat it full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. That word without partiality is undistinguished, unintelligible, without dubiousness, ambiguity, or uncertainty. Okay? So that's what it is, man. The wisdom that Yahweh Shah gives us, all right, covers all aspects of wickedness. All it all wickedness, everything, every evil thought, as as Apostle Paul said. Without hypocrisy. Okay. As even the elder was saying, like, you get on us for what we say, but what about what they're doing? Okay, as a matter, like I was saying before, here it is. You applied your mind to study us, but why not apply your mind to study them? Even if uh, King Solomon, he said he applied his mind, you know, to know all things. And that was, you know, that's how he received all that wisdom. The scriptures say, be not ignorant of anything small or great, of any knowledge. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And that's what we're doing. How are we making peace? By telling Israel to come back to the Heavenly Father. All right. And therefore, the land can be healed. You know, therefore, there will be no more wars. Therefore, Yahweh Shah will have to come back and save us. And that's the true gospel. That's the good tidings. Okay. This is the book of... um. Proverbs chapter 10. It's like you bear with me, Aki. I just read read uh verse nine and ended off there. It says uh Proverbs ten and nine, he that walketh uprightly walketh surely. The word uprightly meaning integrity, completeness, fullness. Okay, so we walk in with the whole armor. The scriptures tell us we're supposed to walk with the whole armor of the Heavenly Father. Okay. Here the scriptures say, even Isaiah was that Isaiah 28. This is how you're supposed to preach to these people. Anything else, you're actually laying a snare upon them. Alright. Let me see. Salakia. Uh see the 28 or 29 and 8. Lock it one second. Lock it. Isaiah twenty-eight and verse nine. Whom shall he whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? All right. The tidings. Okay. Whom shall he make to understand the good tidings, the gospel? Them that are weaned from the milk, and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Okay, so that's how you speak, preach the gospel. All right, meaning you're supposed to go into the whole gospel, the old as well as the new. Now let's go back to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. He that walketh uprightly. Meaning, completely. He that walketh uprightly, meaning completely, innocently, with integrity, walketh surely. 
but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. Okay? So he's being known. And us with the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the true and holy power of, of this universe, of the scriptures, you know, um, sees that. You know, us of the hopeful elect and the elect sees that because the elect will also walk uprightly, also walk perfectly as the Apostle Paul has. You know, so with that, Shalom to the elect.